everybody, Fiber Spider back again in the kitchen with another tasty treat video for you. And today we are going to be making gumdrops. Oh yes, they are tasty. They are simple and I think you guys are really going to like them. And you only need a few basic ingredients. Gelatin, water, sugar, food coloring, and some flavored extracts. That's pretty much it. Very, very simple. And of course, you will need some additional things to help you along the way, uh, like candy molds. Uh, I cannot recommend enough using silicone candy molds. Actually, I got these cute little bears at Walmart. They're so adorable. And also today, I'm going to be using this gumdrop mold that I found at Michael's. You can find these just about anywhere um, in the baking section of craft stores and big box stores. Um, very, very easy. And of course, also, I can't stress this enough, you are also going to want to use a cooking spray or some sort of mold release. Otherwise, you are going to have a fun time getting those out of the molds. <laughs> I speak from experience. The overall process, it's very, very quick. It only takes about a half an hour to actually do the cooking aspect. The rest of it, it's waiting. Mm -hmm. Yep. You need to let the gel set in the mold for about 12 hours. So if you wanna make these, plan ahead. And from my experience, they taste better over time because they crystallize more. It's like they they mature with age, unlike me. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Hello again. All right, so I have my induction cooker here. You can use your stovetop, but because we're going to be dealing with molten sugar, I think that it would be best if I use the induction cooker. All right, so first things first, you are going to need three packets of gelatin. Now the box comes with four, but we only need three. Also, this is not heating up at all just yet, by the way. Okay, so we've got our three packets of gelatin. Now to this, you add a half of a cup of cold water. And going to stir this together. Trying to dissolve the gelatin. Make sure there are no lumps. Okie dokie. So, what this is doing right now is, I believe it's a process called blooming. And so, the, the water is gonna get soaked into the gelatin and it is going to jellify and it's basically prepping the gelatin. Now, in the microwave, I now have, it is three quarters of a cup of water, which I'm going to bring to a quick boil. And while that is doing its thing in the microwave, I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes, okay? And let it do its thing and then we're gonna add the boiling water and go from there. All right, so it's been about five minutes and as you can see, my, my gelatin has completely jellified and I'm going to get out my hot water here and pour this on in. Okay. 
give this a good stir. And then we get to add the sugar. It's going to be two cups of sugar. And then give this a good mix. Now, at this point, because the gelatin has been heated up a little bit, you're going to notice a smell. Yes, um, I'm not going to lie. It smells exactly like what it's made of. It does not smell particularly good. Um, truth be told. Um, <laughs> first time that I made this, my mom came out of her room and she said, What is that stench? Well, yeah, you know, it does not smell pleasant, I will be the first to admit. However, however, once this is completely processed and you put in the flavoring and it has undergone its transformation, it does not smell like this, I assure you. Um, <laughs> there are vegan substitutes that you can use. Um, but we're, we're going old school here. So if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, I apologize. All right, so get this completely mixed up together so it is relatively homogenous. Nice and liquidy, and all that sugar has basically been dissolved in there. All right, now, you need to bring this up to a boil. Now, the reason why I'm using the amount of ingredients that I'm using is because my pot is only so big. In fact, the original recipe was double everything that I'm currently using. So, because I have a small pot, we make do with what we got. So, we're going to bring this up to a boil. And the reason why you're going to want a decent sized pot is because when this boils, it boils. It, it does rise and froth and get all sorts of funky. So, I'm going to bring this up to a boil and I will be right back. Alrighty, so we are just about the rolling boil stage for our gelatin sugar mix. As you can see, it's, it, it's starting to froth and foam and develop into its own. Let me give it a quick stir here because, yeah, it, it, it expands, if you will. And so after it has reached this boiling point, you're going to want to reduce the temperature down to 250 degrees. And then we get to let it simmer for about 25 minutes, approximately. Got a nice good boil going on here. Okay, where am I at at the moment with my little digital thermometer here? Okay. I think I need to recalibrate this thing. That is okay though. Put this away. All right, so let me reduce the heat. There we go. The heat has been reduced. And this will start to settle down a little bit. You know, it will bubble, but not quite so vigorously. There we go. All right. So from here, I'm going to set my timer for about 25 minutes. Okay. My timer has been set. And of course, you want to keep stirring this so that it doesn't burn to the bottom of your pan and get even more weird. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to keep giving this a good stir. Let it simmer. 
and in about 25 minutes, we then get to do the flavoring, coloring, and pouring. I'll see you in a bit. Alrighty, my dears, so it has been simmering and bubbling away for about 25 minutes. Magic time. All right, so let me stop this, unplug this. Ah, I can hear myself think. It's a wonderful thing. All right, remove this from the heat. Scoot you into another spot. There we are. Okay, now I'm gonna get my molds ready. Let's see, cooking spray. I'm gonna do this over the sink so I don't slip and fall later. Okay, that's one. And. Just a moment, sorry. Okie dokie. All right, got my, my molds all set up here. Now, going to try something new this time. The last couple of times that I did this, I've already done this twice. Last times I just did one big batch for a flavor. So I think what I'd like to try to do is divide this in half and do two flavors. So must, must be careful here. Uh, let's see, try to get it to the one cup mark. Because this makes about two cups. There we go. And then I got another one over here. Again, bear with me. Okay, just shy of two cups. All right. Now then, we have our jelly mix all ready to go. And I've got my flavorings and my colorings. Now, I was thinking about doing lemon with yellow and almond with blue. That's, I don't know how I figure that as far as the colors, but hey, that's where, that's what I'm going with and I'm sticking to it. So for the yellow, I'm going to add quite a few drops. I want a nice, vibrant yellow if I can manage it. I'm just going for broke and adding a whole lot here. And as far as flavor, you're gonna want, since I'm having this, it's going to be a half of a, no, actually, excuse me, a, a quarter of a teaspoon? No, half a teaspoon? Let me see here. Yes, half a teaspoon per batch. If you're just making one big batch, it would be a half a teaspoon. So, let me use this one. So half of a teaspoon of my lemon extract here, roughly. If there's a little bit more, hey, it's okay. It tastes good. Why not? And then for my blue batch, I don't want it to be too terribly dark. I can always add more. And I just need to add two of these because this is a quarter of a teaspoon. This is actually a uh, emulsifier. It's not actually extract, but hey, it tastes awesome. Okay. 
actually I did a batch, it was my second batch actually, that I did, it was um, raspberry almond and those came out so good. Oh my gosh. Ooh, that's hot. Give this a good stir. Wow, that is really blue. That is significantly blue. <laughs> okay, and you know what? Since I already used this one, woo! Sizzle, sizzle. Okay. And then, really, it's just a matter of filling up your molds. And I'm going to try to go have these, quite frankly because my, my gummy bear mold, it has a total of 12 little cavities there. So I figured do six and six, and you wanna go nice and slowly, actually, so that you can actually see what I'm doing. You know, you wanna go nice and slow and try not to overfill them. If you do overfill them, it is not the end of the world because you can tear away the excess very, very, very easily. So do not fret or worry about that. I want to do a couple bears. The bears are so stinking cute. I love them. Yeah, so the first time, <laughs> the first time when I made these, I did not use any cooking spray or anything, and I had a heck of a time getting them out of the molds. Let me tell you, I managed, but it was not fun whatsoever. So I cannot stress that enough, that it is important to use some sort of a mold release. Um, frankly, you do not taste anything weird as far as the cooking spray. No, you don't taste anything if that is a concern of yours. As far as substitutes instead of cooking spray, uh, maybe you could use butter. I don't know. I honestly, if I were you, I would do just a little bit more research on candy mold releases. Um, when I did a, a cursory search, it was basically just saying, oh yeah, silicone, it, it won't stick. No, no, it, it sticks, okay? <laughs> let, let's just, let me just be clear about that. It stuck. And I just would like to save you a little bit of grief, if I may, because Whoa, that really overflowed. Okay, not a huge deal. So we're going to do these in the vicinity. So in case if it does overflow, it's not a big deal. Well, I, oh, I did that one too. Okay, I really should start doing some of the almond ones. Okay. Alrighty. So, you know what? I'm going to finish filling up all these molds off camera, and I will see you in just a moment. Be right back. All right, so our molds have all been filled. In fact, I had a little bit left over. So I went and found one of my other molds. It's like an itty bitty bunt pan, very cute. And now we get to play the waiting game. About 12 hours and we will do the unmolding. I'll see you then. Hello again. All right, so it is the following day and our little gummies have set. I can't wait to dive into these bears. They just, they're screaming at me, eat me. All right, so. Uh, this next process, it's a little bit messy, but it is very, very easy, provided, of course, that you have used a cooking spray to use as a release agent. 
And so really you just pop these little guys out of their molds like the sole and they come right out. Perhaps with a little bit of coaxing if you didn't get all of the spray in there and there you go, it's a little guy. And what I was referring to before about the, the excess, you can just rip that off, not a problem. You don't wanna damage your little gummy, but you can just get rid of that, no problem whatsoever. And then right here, I've got a small bowl of just regular granulated sugar, and you want to give it a, a good covering. You wanna bury this little guy in the sugar. Give it a good smoosh. You know, th this is not a time for dusting. No, you want to cover this thing. <laughs> and this is great because it will get it a little bit sweeter, but also, more importantly, it will keep these guys from sticking together as well as sticking to your hands. And it will also improve the crystallizing process and will make this even tastier. So, oh guy, he's ready to go. Now, what you can do, okay, I have not tried this as of yet, but what you can do is you can add citric acid to this sugar right here um, in order to create sour gummies. Yes, you can. It's not something that I've experimented with as of yet, but I might in the future, I don't know. So yeah, all you do is just get all of your little gummies, give them a nice little roll around in the sugar, and then you let them sit out for a bit so that they can firm up even more. And they'll develop sort of like a little bit of a, uh, a crusty exterior, which is actually good. It's kind of what you want. And it's sort of, like I said, sort of like the, the aging process, if you will. And that happens even more over time, even if you keep them in a container, which is what I do. And honestly, I think that these are the bomb. They are so delish, love them. And so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna finish covering all of these little guys off camera and we will do the taste test. I will see you in a bit. Alrighty, see you in a bit. Alrighty, so now for the moment of truth that I've been waiting for and I'm sure you have been as well, the taste test. So as you can see, the yield is actually quite good uh, as far as how many you actually get. And also I had enough to make up a nice little assortment plate, some that I had made previously. Very, very excited. All right, now there is a difference in the, the texture as far as the older ones versus the newer ones, which I will show you. So let's dive in with one of the newer ones. So here we have this little blue bear. So this should be almond if I'm remembering correctly. And so this guy is going to be very, very stretchy. <laughs> very, very, very stretchy because he's still fresh. So, bon appetit. Really good. Subtle but really, really good. Um, you can definitely taste the, the almond flavoring. Um, it is not overpowering. I think that using that measurement as far as the extract is perfect. Um, you don't want it to be, you know, you don't want it to smack you upside the head, unless if that's what you're going for. Really awesome though. Now, one of the little, whoop, <laughs> one of the little lemon ones. Very, very tasty. Again, really, really, really squishy because those are very fresh. Now, 
the ones that I had made previously, they're already about a week old. Apparently, these are good for several weeks in a container at room temperature, no problem. And so previously, I had made, uh, it was a combination of orange and lemon, as well as raspberry and almond. And those, I think, are probably my favorites. So let's see. So this one right here is one of the orange and lemon. Now, yes, it's a bit crusty, but if you get through the crust, you get that nummy, nummy goodness on the inside still. As you can see, it's still very, very gummy on the inside. Quite frankly, I kind of like the crust because it adds dimension, a little bit of texture to it. I rather like it. Hmm. Pardon me. Now, for one of my raspberry almond. These, these, I think, I really hit upon a really nice combination as far as the flavors are concerned. And I have so much fun with these. Oh, these send me, okay? I should definitely make more of these on my next batch. The raspberry and almond, perfect. Mm. Mm. I'm a huge fan of raspberry anything, so these are perfect. Now, the only thing more that I could possibly do to these, which, if I'm feeling that industrious, I very well might, but is uh, before sugaring these, perhaps, I don't know how well it would work, but perhaps cover them in chocolate. Oh, Ooh, I don't know. That could be a dangerous thing. You might, ne you might not ever see me again. I just might die from from bliss i don't know but these are delish had so much fun making them and i love sharing them because you know that my, my co-workers you know they they dig these and i love sharing with them and there you go how to make gumdrops you know in a variety of shapes flavors colors they're so much fun and they're pretty darn easy so that being said, have you made these before? Have you made something similar before? I'm always interested in your feedback, your input, most definitely. Mm. You know, what was your experience making them? Um, now, like I said before, I understand that the initial smell of the gelatin is awful, okay? With a capital A, it is awful. However, there is no hint at all of the taste nor the smell of anything even resembling what we were initially working with. So rest assured, it's a very temporary passing thing. You know, once you get over that hump, these are a delight. But what was your experience if you have, you know, let me know, you know, uh, other creative ideas, other recipes you guys might have in mind. I'm always open to suggestions and of course, constructive criticism. So, that being said, you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay making fabulous stuff in the kitchen, stay safe, take care of yourselves and each other, make some sweets for somebody you love. Yes, it's a good thing. <laughs> and I will see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.